My recruiter told me over and over again when I was joining the military, he said, whatever you do, don't volunteer. He said, they're going to ask for volunteers and they're going to do it all the time because that's the military way. And you need to learn right now to never volunteer. My first day in boot camp, where 80 of us are lined up there, we're all terrified, drill instructors are running around screaming at each and every one of us, we have no idea what's going on, and they started doing what my recruiter warned me to do. They were looking for a volunteer, they wanted a leader, they wanted somebody out of the 80 to be responsible for the 80 when they weren't around, which was rare, but there was those times. I knew what they were doing, but they didn't do it as a group, they did it individually. I was the second person they came to. The first person never answered the question. He was trained better than me. He was smarter than me. I answered the question. They were asking basically, are you a man or a female? Are you a man or a woman? They didn't use those words. The words they used I can't use right now, but they were asking that question and I thought, there's no way I'm not answering this. There's no way I'm not going to at least stand up. And I knew what they were trying to do. I answered the question, so I was volunteered to be the leader of that flight of 80 men. And I hated that. I hated that it happened to me. I hated having to face that. Because I was an 18 year old, I had no idea what I was doing, nor did any of the other 80 that were there. We ranged from 18 to 28 years old, and all of us were green. All of us were really young, and most of us, like me, were pretty ignorant about the world and leadership. Turns out, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Being volunteered to do something that was scary, because I wouldn't have done it myself. There's no way, and then I would have missed out. I would have missed out on that opportunity of growing those eight weeks, and I had to grow. I had to learn, I had to stretch, I had to get comfortable being uncomfortable, and I had to fail and fail on an epic levels in those eight weeks that I would have never had the opportunity to do, which made me stronger and better and wiser. That was a great opportunity. At the time, I didn't understand it. But through perspective, now looking back, I do understand it. And that helped me in my future to learn that volunteering for the scary things, that's where the greatness is. Life is looking for volunteers to face the scary things, to solve problems. That's what life is about. That's what your job, business, or career is about. You have problems there. And your managers, your owners, and everybody else, your clients and customers, your peers, they're looking for someone to solve problems, to face the scary. They're looking for volunteers. They're looking all the time. They might not come right out and ask it, but they're saying, we have this. How do we overcome this? What do we do to achieve this? How do we move our numbers? How do we grow our brand? They're looking for volunteers. And most people are doing what I tried to do. Blend in, don't make eye contact, avoid it, and just be average. And that's a mistake. I'm glad my drill instructor volunteered me that day almost 40 years ago. And I'm hoping you start volunteering for the scary things today because that's where the secret of life is. That's where you find your destiny. It's hidden in the scary things, in the things that solve problems. My name is Ed Carcary, and I'd love to connect with you at edcarcary.com. Find your passion, you'll find your life.